My name is Wayne Stamball. I'm currently the KeyCAD project leader. We'll talk today a little bit about the uh, current status of KeyCAD, where we're at right now, where we'd like to go in the next uh, stable version. Um, I'm going to change my format a little bit this year. La the last two years I've kind of done a just I talked at you. It's going to be a little bit more of a, a show and tell. Um, I've just picked, I kind of cherry picked some of the bigger highlights of the upcoming stable release and try, kind of left a little bit of the more detailed stuff out so I can get through it a little bit, little bit quicker because in the past there's been so many questions. So without further ado, and of course it's going to make a look, what's going on here? Okay. Ah, it's my computers. Okay, current project status. Hopefully stable release five will happen soon. Um, I'd like, I'm hoping in the next month or two, we're going to be ready to branch and then start you know, final bug fixing. So uh, the goal is sometime around summer, see how that works in practice. Anybody who's ever, you know, done an open source project knows that that doesn't always work that way. Um, the develop, the version six uh, development roadmap is complete. If you want to go see that, it's online on the KiCad website. We have seen a uh, increased uh, interest in user interest than, from the downloads that are uh, from our website. Um, increased commercial interest and uh, I was told earlier when ha talking to Javier that there was a sudden um, spike in donations and if people who aren't know the whole situa situation with Eagle know probably when that happened and why it happened. So, <laughs> so and that's a good thing. Thank you, Eagle. Um, <laughs> uh, now, yeah, I'm not going to complain. Uh, this year, we, first for the first time, we had two hackathons. Um, some of us were at CERN over the summer in July for a week, and then there was another hackathon in, in the fall at Brazil, in Brazil. And I don't normally like to give too many commercial people credit, but in, if, I don't know if you're familiar. Somebody had hijacked a long time ago keycad.org. We, we we didn't get the domain. Somebody else took it from us and we so we weren't going to pay the money because we didn't have the money to pay to get the domain back but digikey graciously bought the domain paid the five grand to purchase from whoever had it and wanted that money for it and they redirected keycad.org to the website so now when you type in keycad.org yeah thank you thank you digikey right they they you know they're under no obligation to do that for us and you know but i talked to their their people and they're yeah no problem it was very very cordial so keep that in mind when you're ordering parts from somebody <laughs> oh it's going to be slow today isn't it yes it is okay ah, come on where's the first page of course it goes to Okay, stable five release, new new features, the big stuff. Okay, I know technically the first one is not KiCad, but for all the people who develop on KiCad, that was probably more important than everything else we've done. <laughs> <laughs> we are now on the Git project. Um, I'm not going to go over this the next one because uh, Tomas did a really nice presentation earlier on the uh, ng spice integration in, into KiCad. Um, if you want to go take a look at that, you can go look at the video. It's, it's, it's really nice. If you haven't had a chance to use it, if you're, if you're a Spice user, I highly recommend you try it. Okay, so let's get into some of the stuff that happened here. We have a few simple things here. One of these is the schematic editor tool. Um, like, so one of the things that, you know, it's easy to get, you know, your fields lined up. Very simple tool is the spice, the new alignment tool. You just hover over and hit O, or you want to do the context menu, you can do that too. Um, it's just a, a, a new tool that happened to be thrown together by one of our guys as a cheap and dirty who was tired of hand, you know, trying to, you know, change the grid size and place everything. So that's that's a nice new feature that we have. Oh. The next one is the, uh, you also just saw that. Um, you see there's a net highlight here in pink. So if I go over here and click on the net highlighting tool and I click on a different net or a different wire, it'll, and it also works for hierarchy. So if you, you know, if you're one of those guys has a, a big sheet with, you know, or, and you just use labels instead of actual wires, it'll highlight the labels too. So like if there's one over here on the side of the page and one on that side of the page, they'll turn pink. And so now it's not hooked up to the board editor that's coming up in the next version. So. That's a new feature in the schematic editor. One of the other new things in the uh, um, schematic editor that was um, 
I'm not going to go over that. The, there's a re regular expression search lab. You know, when you're searching through the library, you pick a symbol to put in your schematic editor. So rather clever. It's a combination of type as you go, old wildcard searching, matching, and regular expression. It looks at the whole thing and picks the best combination of um, uh, resp uh, you know uh, queries that it gets, and then that's what you see in this the symbol list. So, so for you know probably only us geeks will ever care about regular expression searching, but it's there if you if you want to use it. Um, another requ requested feature is you can now directly up update the board um, from the schematic editor. In other words, there's no intermediate netlist file. You can you can still generate it. It's just it's now transparent. It's actually sent through an internal communications bus from the board to the schematic, and it looks a little something like this. You go in here and you go into the tools menu and update PCB from schematics, and you'll see the schematic. Since I didn't make any changes, there were no changes, and then you can perform the update. You can say, yeah, I accept them, or no, I don't, and then it'll make any changes to your board. So now it's transparent. So when I hit perform PCB, any changes that are in that list are going to be made to my board. So there's no intermediate. You don't have to save the netlist to a file, go into the board editor, open the new, you know, re-import the netlist, and then go through this iteration. Can you pop champagne for that one? Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, it, it has a converse too, which is rather nice. We, you can also go the other way. When you have the board editor open, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, it kind of works in both directions there. So that's um, that one. Probably the single biggest user change that you'll see this year is the, the 3D editor was completely rewritten and it, it brought a lot of things along with it that are really nice. I know ray tracing is eye candy. Most people, unless you're you know, creating brochures or something like that, you probably don't care. But I don't know if anybody, any of you have seen what some of the, re the results of our ray tracing are. And I don't know how good this is gonna look here. But if you look at some of the, if you have really high, <laughs> Well, you, now, in all fairness, you have to have really high quality models for that to happen. You just can't take run of the mill models. You got to do all the texturing. But if you're dedicated enough and you're ambitious enough, you can get these kind of results. So, yeah. So, and I know it's just kind of eye candy. And I'm not going to do it live here because this computer is too slow. If you know anything about ray tracing, it, it, it can take a while. So, so that's a nifty little uh, feature we got. One, the, the, other, the other nice thing about the 3D viewer is it, it, we used, it brought in STEP. Um, the, the, the developer who did it did a nice plug-in system, so now we can import, you know, not just our VRML, VRML models, we can also import STEP. So, which also gave us direct export to STEP. Once we had, basically, we can import STEP models and, and flip them around, you can now, from the board editor, edit to step and I'll show you um, here's a simple board that I did some of these are oh man it looks terrible on this nah, it's probably because of the resolution um, only one of these components on this board is a step model the rest of them are VRMLs um, so when you do the export you will see something like where's free CAD here no that ain't it where is it there and so that's a, a step model that's to scale so if you wanted to, like say you were putting that in an enclosure, you can pull that into your whatever solid modeling package you use for, you know, hardware development and use that model. And that's a step model. So we now have, because that was a really a highly requested feature for a long time. So, uh, so that's, that was the, the 3D viewer bought us all that. So we also now support rounded rectangle, pat, round, you know, our pat, we, in the past, we've only just had pure rectangles. We now support rectangular or rounded rectangulars. Um, one of, the, one of the, the old things that were left over from the good old days when you would, the first time you opened, you know, imported your net list for a board, all the footprints would be laying on top of each other and you had to spread them out manually. And people who know, or are currently using the version four know that. There's now, when you import them, it'll, it'll just, It'll expand them. It won't try to put them in any particular order, but they won't be laying on top of each other anymore. So they'll, it's easier to move them around. Um, <laughs> I knew that one was good. <laughs> uh, the other thing is now that we can, if you, we can go the other direction. So if you go from, the, if you're in the schematic editor and you made some changes to your, or in the board editor and you made some changes to your, um, 
schematic, you can come here and say, yeah, pull it. And it, I, I see the exact same dialogue. It just came the other way. This time it went and queried the information in the schematic editor and said, okay, what do I need to make change in the board? What edits have I made? And that's the, uh, so it's bi-directional, which is rather, which is convenient for users. No, no, it doesn't go backwards yet. No, that's going to be the next, yeah, we'll talk about that. In the, that's uh, version six. <laughs> baby steps, baby steps. Um, the gal canvas is now, this was a requested feature. If you go into the view menu, this is uh, top side, looking at the board from the top side to the back side, which is normally, you know, the normal view. Not We now have a flip view so you can... Um, Look at it from the back side, because sometimes when you're board, okay. Well, sometimes when you're board, you know, it's hard laying out board. It's hard to look through the board and see because the back side's mirrored. So you, part placement. Yes. Well, now you can flip it. Now that's looking from the back side of the the back side to the front side. Flip this way. Like if I just took this board and went, that's before you couldn't do that. You always had to work from the pot top through. So that's new. Side you're looking at, or? Uh, no. <laughs> there's there's a, there's a checkbox that tells you you're in flip view, but no. Um, I this computer doesn't show that very well, but that we put there's anti anti aliasing support for the OpenGL canvas. So like when you see the um, the net names on the traces, they're they're just smoother looking now. It's the the text the text is rendered with uh, if you're you know your graphics card supports it. We now have uh, uh, anti-aliasing support. Gerber X2 extensions. Gerber's desperately trying to stay relevant. I don't know how familiar you are with them, but you can embed things like to stack up, you know, your layer stacks and write in your Gerber files now. There, we are. As far as I know, I don't know if anybody else has even done it because uh, Jean-Pierre Chirac, the founder, the original founder of the project, he has a close working relationship with Ucamco and. I think we're the first project to offer X2 support directly. And now the, the person shove router now in the past, it, like when you were shoving stuff around, sometimes you, you, you didn't get the clearance around your traces. So if for some reason you couldn't route something through because you were, you, you, you were, you were um, violating your clearances, there, you actually see the clearance now on the push and shove router. The legacy always had that. You could see where the, the, um, the clearance was. So that's the new features. Okay, it's going to be slow. Come on. What's it doing? Okay, some improvements. I'm going to knock over too many of these. We got some new bitmaps and the launcher. Um, the schematic editor configuration is now a unified tab oriented dialogue. It's cleaned up. We used to have like three or four different ways, like color settings. They're on a single dialogue now. It's much cleaner. Um, the symbol editor library, that's not here's we, our library editing we know is weak. Um, our library management tools are a little weak. So we're in the process of working on that. We changed the Python shell from PyCrust, which is just a basically a real basic Python shell to the Pyala mode, which is a little bit nicer editor, so when you fire up the uh, Python shell from KiCad, you can, or from PCB new, you can um, uh, you get a little bit nicer shell to work, or nicer Python shell to work with. We have uh, object selection filtering the Gal canvas. You can, that's that's not been committed yet, but that's coming. You can you know filter by objects. So you, you know when you're selecting a big group, you can just filter by say a, a footprint or a text or whatever, and you're only going to get the text. Oh man. So just a couple of code improvements. The 3D model has a uh, plugin manager which br brought in uh, open um, OCE. That's one of the reasons we got step. Um, the schematic plugin is IO manager is just about done and getting ready to be committed. That'll give us the ability to start importing other for um, direct import of other formats without you know providing like a script to convert from somebody else's format to, to which is what a lot of users do right now, like from Eagle to EE schema, it'll just be you open up an Eagle file. Um, the new file formats, that's still questionable yet. There's a lot of work to be done there. Um, we're getting close to having all the editing tools from the old legacy canvas done 
into the open what the gal canvases which are open gl and um um the uh fall fall back to cairo when the rendering when that's not done um we moved i took all the we don't download libraries and build them anymore we expect to we we had now have pretty much full coverage for all platforms on our auto builders so we really don't we don't really need to do this anymore so because i'm not asking users to build from source anymore since we have such good um our nightly builds commit goes in it's usually built within a couple hours unless there's a problem so we don't do that anymore. We're now a C++ 11 project. We turned the corner and just said, okay, we're gonna do, we're gonna quit. We're gonna turn on 11. And the usual bug fixing and polishing. Probably one of the things that you don't get a lot of, people don't get a lot of credit for, but if you've been paying attention recently to the number of commits to the R libraries, um, the quality of our libraries, both footprint and symbol libraries has significantly improved and there's a lot more coverage. Those guys have been doing a bang up job. They probably don't get them as much credit as they should. Documentation's coming along well too. And as of right now, version four has been translated, fully translated in all those languages. I expect version five will be too, because there hasn't been a huge number of changes in terms of the uh, code um, internationalization. You know, the strings haven't changed that much, so it won't be a huge problem. Okay, version six, I'm gonna scream through this as fast as I can. Version six, the schematic editor is going to get a lot of work. Um, we're going to get they're going to, we're going to port that over to uh, the the um, graphic extraction layer. That'll be OpenGL and Cairo. Um, the new tool framework, which will give us the select you know selection in, of objects similar to what we have now in PCB new. Um, we're going to have a shared object, a, a common low level library for the schematic objects. Um, there's also going to be highlighting when you're working in PCB new, you click on a, a net and the trace and the board editor gets highlighted. It's part of the original, the first part of that change has been done where we can just click on nets and highlight. That'll be bi-directional. If I'm in a board editor and I click on the, on a trace or no, you know, it, it, all connected traces, it's going to go back the other way and highlight that in the, in the board edit or in the schematic editor. Um, we're going to ch change over to system fonts instead of right now using our, our hard coded font, which, the reason we have that is because if you render boards, it has to be accurate. On the schematic, it doesn't matter. So here people can use creative fonts and use whatever they want. It, I'm not, I, that was kind of a implementation thing. Um, this is coming. We, we're working on this now already, but it's not gonna be, I don't wanna hold up the next stable version for that. I, I'd lo love to have it in my pocket right now, um, be all, with all fairness and all honesty, but we're working on that. So that means, you got a schematic, you got a, we already have a direct import of, uh, if you don't know, we already directly import Eagle board files and footprint libraries. But we still don't have the schematic and the symbol library import is our, that's our Achilles. We're missing that part, right? So you can't, you know, you want to be, put, be able to put both pieces back together. So that's coming in the next version. Uh, it's just giving me fits. Um, once we, you know, and we're also going to uh, swig out uh, EE schema, so that'll give us Python and any other scripting languages, swig supports, and anybody wants to attempt to build. Right now, we're just swigged out to Python, just like the board editor. Yeah, I got it. Um, lots of things, ERC, library management usability. We're going to go in the board editor. We're going to have support for complex pad shapes, pin and gate swapping. That comes with a new file format because there's, the current file format won't support that. So then that'll be bi-directional. So you change something in the, the board and you swap, you swap pins to make a route, be, your, your tra layout better. It's gonna re be reflected back in the schematic. Um, full clipboard support, we're weak there. We're trying, it, it, that comes with a new file format too because we, I don't wanna have two parsers to cut, cut and paste stuff. So we're doing that. We are redoing the geometry library, so we're going to have improved coverage for, for our, our design rule checks on the board. So that's going to be uh, big, and that'll be that'll. Ah, darn it! Give me a. Um, keep out zones on boards, and then we're going to do the same application of the wildcard of the search on the footprint uh, library search. So hatched zones. Right now, our zone fills are solid. Um, externally linked objects, and that comes with the group, so you can like group a, a part of a, the board layout and duplicate it multiple times with the external reference. You make the change to one, 
and all the, I think it's called snippets in some of the other EDA packages. Board stack up MP's calculator. That may be that one might be a stretch. Um, we also like to do the improve the rat's nesting so that you, we can change colors of no, ne, of, of each rat of each line or turn the visible you know turn them on and you know if you have a complex board and you have to have a look at all the, the entire rat's nest and you're like ah you know you can't see the forest through the tree so we're going to make some improvements there. Um, this one, if WX Widgets ever gets its act together, its AUI together, we might that one may not happen again. And we'd also like to port the Gerber viewer to the uh, that would benefit from being OpenGL because that's pretty graphics intensive. Okay, way out. Uh, microwave support tool for the board editor because um, that we'll need the, uh, the the geometry library will be needed to support that. Import OB, ODB plus plus possibly export. I, a lot of people like to use that in the commercial world. Um, database management, uh, we, there's been a lot of interest in that lady f lately from commercial vendors that they want to be able to, you know, inf plug into their CIS system, they make a part change, they want the schematic editor to say, hey, your CIS system made a part change, or this part's going obsolete, you want to, some of the CAD programs already do that, you get a warning, that's long, real long-term stuff, because that's really a lot of work. Um, uh, move to, I want to go to plugins for everything. So eventually, if we can use competing technology for things like auto placers, auto routers, routing tools, we could have specialized routing tools where maybe I have a microwave routing tool specifically for routing microwaves and that you don't use the normal because it wouldn't make sense to use that in a microwave application. Um, unit testing, we, we have some work to do there. Um, and integrate comp uh, Automatic purchasing. Uh, I've actually been one of the things the guy at DegiKey was interested in was donating time. Yeah. For, obvi for obvious reasons, I'm not. Look, I'm not naive. I know what, what he where he was going, but I, you know, hey, as, I told him as long as the code meets our standards and, and it will have to be abstract. Because I told him I was like, no, it's not going to be proprietary. It's going to be abstract. And so, if other vendors want to build on top of that, that you know, that's my you know, as the project leader, I have to make those decisions, and that that's my decision. So until I'm not project leader anymore so and that and we actually had a lot, quite a few people that like that id you click on it your it generates a bill of materials goes out in order say i want 20 sets of parts for this board and boom you know goes to digikey or farnell or whoever your vendor du jour is and places an order you give them your credit card number and you got parts in the mail yeah, parts in the mail okay i want to thank just a quick shout out thanks all the developers who give their time and talent it's it's takes a lot of work keycad's a big project really big project people will underestimate exactly how big it is um uh thank you thank you everybody who's interested in keycad and for using keycad i hope you know we can continue to support whatever you're doing we're you know i know the pace of development's never as fast as anybody wants it's not as fast as i would like but we have manpower you know, we're like any other open source project. There's more to do than there's people to do it. And I want to give a special shout out to Javier and uh, CERN for their support because they make, they make this possible. This dev room, and they've contributed a lot to KeyCAD, and um, we owe them a big, uh, big, a great deal of thanks. So thank you, everybody, again for coming. <laughs> All right, questions? Can you check that both schematic and board are consistent? Can I check it on the command line at the end of the day that I didn't forget because of the, the, the question is, is how can I make sure that the schematic and the board are up, up to date? Um, on the, can I do it on the command line? No, it's, it's, it's going to be in the, the, the graphical user edit, uh, interface. And honestly, we don't have a direct way to do that right now. I suppose we could write some kind of connectivity ish where we say, hey, your schematics changed, it will impact your board, at least warn you, because we do have the tool now where you can do the direct, you're gonna be able to directly update the schematic, or from the, you're in the board, oh yeah, I updated my schematic, yeah, go update from schematic. So, it's it's something to think about. I mean, certainly uh, if, if it's something we could, we'd have to look at, but um, I'm sure it's doable. I mean, it, a lot of these things are doable, it's just, you know, when, when do we do that? We, 
In, yes, in the schematic editor, because we haven't scripted, we haven't swigged it out yet. 